Have you ever wondered why when in some boss fight, sometimes the Colossus seem to stagger out of nowhere way easier than other times? And why on other times it seemed really hard to stagger the boss before they went into their frenzied state? If you're a First Descendant player, you have absolutely run into this more than a few times and been left wondering, what the fuck is going on? Lots of people in the past tried to make claims about how it works, but nobody knew for certain, and the best people could tell you was its damage? I think? Which was about as helpful as letting someone know that sharks are only found in two places on Earth, the northern and southern hemispheres. Now, however, we know exactly how it works. We know how much damage it will take to put a boss into frenzy, how much it takes to stagger them, and several other quirks, so let's talk about it. Quick note to preface all this, though. Every single thing I talk about here, every stat, every bit of info, is available on my website. So if you're wondering where I'm pulling this shit, that is where. I don't run any advertisements, I don't charge you for any of it, it's just there. To start, though, let's go over frenzy. Frenzy, as you know it, is a simple mechanic where after filling up the bar beneath their HP, which is visible whenever you're scanning them, the boss goes immune to damage and triggers a special phase where either they just have a timed duration where they will do something, or you as the player need to do something in order to end the frenzy state. And some bosses in particular, if you don't do something, will wipe the arena and kill everyone inside. When reaching the full frenzy bar, if the boss isn't already doing something, then he enters the frenzy state immediately. But if the boss is in the middle of an animation, then he'll finish up the animation before going into frenzy, which often gives you a a lot of time to finish up a stagger buildup, and that's something we'll talk about later. The Frenzy Bar's amount is calculated by taking the sum total of the boss's HP and shield, and then multiplying it against the Frenzy Conversion Ratio. This is different on every boss, so in the case of Stunning Beauty, she has a 0.6 or 60% ratio. Her Frenzy Bar will have about 340,000 health. There's another stat called Frenzy Damage Rate, and this is the percent of your damage that actually applies to the Frenzy Bar. For her, the rate is 1, meaning 100% of your damage to the boss will also apply to the Frenzy bar. The rate at which Frenzy is filled is not changed, no matter which part of the body you shoot at. So there's a lot of people who had myths going around where if you do body shots, you accrue Frenzy faster. Nope, that has nothing to do with it. The conversion rate is 100% no matter where you shoot. However, that does mean that strictly speaking, weak point hits will fill the bar faster due to doing more damage. But please, for the love of fuck, and all that is holy, please, do not interpret that to mean that weak point hits are bad, because that's like trying to argue that damage is bad, and if you're going to do that, just uninstall. The last stat to discuss here is Frenzy Duration. If on the site you ever see a 99,000 number, that just means the boss has a permanent frenzy that is only turned off by the player finishing a certain mechanic, like gluttony and the drills. Otherwise, the value here is just the time in seconds before the boss will end the frenzy on their own and return to normal. Frenzy itself is not overly complicated, but what is interesting is that each boss has a different frenzy to HP ratio. Some bosses are much easier to send into Frenzy earlier than others. And at the end of the video, we're actually going to go over all the bosses and talk about that. But the last thing to mention here is just that while frenzied, bosses obviously cannot be staggered. Next up though is Rage, and Rage is extremely similar to Frenzy, but is a new mechanic introduced in the Abyss Colossus fights in Season 2. We had Infernal Walker to start, and at the time of this recording we have Defiler, which is everyone's favorite purple punching bag. The main difference between Rage and Frenzy is that while Frenzy has an end that is triggered by a time limit or a mechanic, Rage doesn't actually turn off, technically. When you fill the rage bar, it just accrues damage normally like your frenzy bar would, but once you fill the rage bar, you actually need to remove the rage bar. And the damage you deal to the rage bar is actually reduced once rage is triggered, because they want it to take longer to disable rage than it took to start it. They want it to be harder. At the moment though, there is actually a funny bug with the abyss bosses. In the game stats, the stat that would dictate how large the rage bar should be is being swapped with the amount of damage reduction that the rage bar gets whenever you're shooting the boss in the rage state. This may sound a little fucking confusing, but the end takeaway there is that Defiler should have a rage bar that is twice as large as it is now, meaning it should take you twice as long to send Defiler into the rage state, meaning that fight, in theory, should be significantly easier, because most people would never even run into the rage state if those stats were applying in the right places. Now, whether this is a bug or not, it's going to be up to the devs, maybe they intentionally swapped these stats around, but based on their names alone, the Abyss fights are actually significantly harder than they were ever meant to be. Now let's talk about Stagger, and this is where shit gets interesting because Stagger HP doesn't actually have a fixed value. We have a minimum and a maximum Stagger rate, and then every time the boss is spawned in or staggered, they generate a new one. So say I load into a boss fight, the boss spawns in, it generates a new Stagger HP bar, now I Stagger that boss, the boss stands back up, and now the boss has a new Stagger 
stagger HP bar value. It literally changes with every single stagger applied to the boss. We can show this very easily with Stunning Beauty. Her upper limit is 113,000 stagger, and if I use my Afterglow Sword here, even though it's unmodded, it's going to do about 124,000. Every single time I shoot, it is always going to stagger her, assuming she's not on cooldown for staggers, because that is a thing. And the cooldown for each boss on their staggers is different. But if I swap weapons and get a damage value that falls in the middle of her HP stagger range, then sometimes I do stagger and sometimes I don't. Stagger also has a use it or lose it function, where if you don't deal damage for a certain amount of time, which is different for each boss, then your stagger will actually decay at a very, very fast rate, throwing away any progress you had. On the flip side, though, this does mean that so long as you deal damage every now and then between the boss's expiration timer, you'll never lose that stagger. On top of that, though, breaking parts will never add stagger to the stagger bar in any way. If you do get a grappled part break, the stagger this creates is separate from the standard stagger, and getting a grappled stagger does not reset the total stagger bar you've gained by dealing damage prior. This means if you've dealt a lot of damage, built up your stagger bar, and then you do a grapple part break, the boss will get staggered and it will stand back up, but it will still keep all the stagger that you had before, meaning so long as you wait off the cooldown, you can stagger the boss again. Some other quirks, stagger cannot be gained while a boss is in frenzy, but it also never reduces. So if you were really close to a stagger but the boss went into frenzy, it's okay, the stagger value stays even after the frenzy is over. Dying immediately triggers the decay of stagger, which of course can be countered by doing more damage, maybe in a group setting, but if you're alone and you die, you can pretty much kiss all of your stagger progress goodbye before you're even able to get remotely close to the boss again and stop the decay. The cooldown on staggers also applies to the gain of stagger itself, so if you stagger the boss and it triggers the stagger cooldown after it gets back up, during the cooldown the boss obviously can't be staggered again, but it also won't gain any stagger in that time. And then that's it for math and quirks behind it all. It's not complicated by any means, it was just hard for people to get an accurate idea of what was going on with it since all the stats are different from boss to boss. But since we can now obviously see those stats, it's no longer an issue to work it all out. Before we talk about each boss and the frenzy stagger ratios on all of them, just a quick thank you to Persiflage and Proof for helping me get this tested out and confirming values with me. Now let's talk about bosses. And some of these are going to give you guys a chuckle because it's going to make a lot of sense, but we will start from hard mode executioner and work our way up. When it comes to executioner, we have a frenzy threshold of 5.5 million HP, with the stagger threshold at the low end being 3.9 million and the high end being 6.9 million. That is absolutely understandable if you're doing just a little too much much damage on a Haley build sometimes, you're going to hit the Frenzy Threshold, whereas the randomized Stagger Threshold ends up being higher. That absolutely has a chance to happen. Dead Bride is a lot more forgiving than others with its thresholds. The Frenzy Threshold is at 6.5 million HP, where the Stagger Threshold is at 4.5 million, up to almost 8 million. Devourer, on the other hand, is a fucking joke, because the Frenzy Threshold is at 6 million, whereas the Stagger is at 3.8 to 5.7, meaning that even in the worst possible imaginable scenario, you are guaranteed to Stagger devourer before you frenzy him, unless you just sat there the whole time and let his little minions give him frenzy. So it is not fucking possible to frenzy Devourer before staggering him. Pyro's range is actually pretty unforgiving as well, but he's been nerfed into Oblivion and a fucking Jaber Queef could kill him at this point, so no one actually cares. But Swampwalker, on the other hand, is extremely unforgiving. Its frenzy threshold is at 6.2 million, but even the lowest stagger threshold is at 7.8 million. Fucking a million six hundred thousand damage difference. So unless you have a high enough burst and Swampwalker is in an animation, if your character is too slow to deal damage, you are pretty much guaranteed to hit the frenzy before the stagger. And for a lot of you, that's going to make a lot of sense, because I know that a lot of you struggle with Swampwalker in particular, and now you have a specific reason why. That isn't just that you suck. Obstructor's ratio is pretty unforgiving, where the stagger ratio could be up to a 9.1 million, with the frenzy being at 5.5. However, he can also be murdered by a Jaber Queef at this point, like Pyromaniac. No one fucking cares about the Executioner type enemies anymore. The irony is that Executioner is now a harder boss to fight than both Pyromaniac and Obstructor. Frostwalker is getting shafted between all the other walkers. He's got a frenzy ratio of 6.5 million health and a stagger range of 4.9 to 7.8, but Lepa could come along and sneeze on him. Most of the time you are going to kill him. I don't think I've actually seen a single Frostwalker frenzy since they nerfed him. Molten actually has a surprisingly high high-end stagger range at 12 million, where the frenzy is at 7.9. So if you've ever gone 
spawn in with like a Haley laser beam and then you use that to start and it puts him right into Frenzy, this is absolutely why, because his stagger range can actually be quite a bit higher. Gluttony in particular has a crazy high range. Gluttony in particular is very unforgiving as well with a Frenzy threshold at 12.5 million HP and a stagger threshold that can go all the way up to 17.8. In addition, Gluttony now has the change this is intentional, by the way, this isn't a bug, where his intro animation can't accrue stagger. So if you're going in to do one phase gluttony now, and you have noticed that he goes right into frenzy instead of getting staggered, it's because his intro animation won't gain stagger at all, but it can still gain frenzy. So if you want to make sure stagger is actually building up, you need to wait for the intro animation to end. Deathstalker is surprisingly forgiving, where the frenzy threshold is at 50 million HP. This might seem a lot higher than all the other bosses we just looked at, but that's because Deathstalker is a forced group boss. But even on the high end of the stagger threshold at 57 million, in most cases in a team, you're going to hit the stagger before you hit the frenzy. Hell, even in the Luna and Kyle team on Deathstalker, a single Kyle crit will put Deathstalker into the stagger before putting him into the frenzy. The one you guys care the most about right now, though, is obviously Defiler. Defiler has a stagger at the low end that is at least 1.1 million higher than the rage bar. So you are more likely to put Defiler into the rage state rather than stagger him. But Defiler moves at the speed of a dying turtle, his animations take for fucking ever, so unless your Inez build sucks shit when you're doing the ping pong, the odds are greatly in your favor that you're going to hit the stagger before he can take the time to rage. 